spool up. Watch for the brakes to be released. Power coming up. And then I want you to watch how fast he gets off the ground. Full power, brake release. We're on the roll in the C-17, no master three. 60 knots there. Already 70, 90 knots. Watch for the nose to lift off the ground right about now. There we go. Look at the impressive power of the C-17. C-17's first pass today is going to be a high-speed pass. After completing a tour of drop and we're starting right now. Well, the lines of the aircraft on the runway, the crew is going to accelerate to about 250 knots. That's close to 300 miles an hour, demonstrating the rapid strategic capability of this airplane. C-17 includes a modern computerized glass cockpit, a heads-up display at both pilot stations. That means that flight data, heading, airspeed, all of that information is projected up on the windscreen. And with all of this on board, it allows the aircraft to be operated with a crew half the size of current aircraft. Only three crew members are required to fly the C-17. The aircraft's advanced design allows it to accomplish its entire mission wherever and whenever it needs to go with this crew. And I want you to listen how quiet the C-17 is as he passes show center at high speed. This gives the Glowmaster a tactical advantage while flying low over hostile territory. And it is also very C-17 at a high speed pass from the left. Just listen to the quiet. Not much noise at all. Very neighborhood friendly. C-17 provides a direct delivery capability. Provides the intercontinental cargo carrier. These are large aircraft such as the C-5 Galaxy. We've got one of those parked right down here to our left. And uh, that also provides it with the short field a much smaller aircraft like the C-130 Hercules can land routinely at uh, airfields and runways only 3,000 feet long. Four Pratt & Whitney F-117 engines power the C-17. These are the same engines Lou used on the commercially available Boeing 757 generating 40,000 pounds of thrust. And this amount of thrust allows that aircraft out there carry over 170,000 pounds of cargo. Instantly, the range is suspected. He's got it slowed down. Now you can see those big trailing edge power flaps, the leading edge flaps. situation including the combat delivery of the third 
and the CDS, as you saw here, if you were here this morning, for our airfield assault. It uses a quadruple redundant fly-by-wire system to run its flight controls. This fly-by-wire system means that the aircraft's flight controls are electronically operated by inputs from the control sticks. Incidentally, there are four separate flight control computers, each of which can manage the entire system. The computers continuously monitor the flight controls and each other. If there's any problem, they work around the disabled system. And if that's not enough for you, they even have a mechanical backup system on the system. set up to demonstrate a full flap approach to a simulated short field runway. The short field capability allows the C-17 Globemaster III to land at more than 6,000 more airfields worldwide than are currently available to the C-5 Galaxy and other commercial wide-bodied aircraft. In fact, during the NATO peacekeeping mission, old records, I want you to watch this landing. It's got those big leading slants and Power flaps down, the landing gear is down. Once he touches down on the top of the wing, the spoilers will be deployed to assist in slowing the aircraft down. If notice the back half of each engine will slide rearward, exposing the cascade thrust reversers that directs the thrust of the engines forward, and that also helps in slowing the aircraft. I guarantee you, Captain Kind will have the aircraft stopped within 1,500 feet. Then you're going to see something very few airplanes can do. Watch now, almost no flare as he approaches the runway here at McCord Field. A little power added there to stop the sink rate. There go the spoilers on top of the wing. There are the engine thrust reversers being deployed. Listen for the sound now. Flight demonstration. 